I don't want to bet a side. So there are other options mm-hmm. here. I think there are a plethora of options when it comes to the props world. I think the the ones to consider are Lamar Jackson is rushing prop. There is a reason why this prop has gone up, what, six or seven full yards since the start of the week. Everybody and their mom is seeing what I am seeing. And that's the fact that the Chiefs let Josh Allen run all over them. He hit his, his prop for rushing in the first half of that game. We know that the Ravens are extremely dangerous when Lamar Jackson is running the football. It's really hard to stop Lamar Jackson. So I think that's one that enters the chat. The other ones are the anytime touchdowns. Lamar Jackson, if you like that better, that is even money. I don't necessarily love anytime touchdown bets because I feel like it's kind of a crapshoot, just whoever gets the Mm -hmm. ball when it's like first, second, or third and goal. Uh, Also, Travis Kelsey. We haven't talked a ton about him and his playing prowess. We Mm -hmm. did with Alex Gold the other day. But do we think Travis Kelsey is full scale all the way back? I would say, yes, at some point we're going to see a touch drop off. That's going to be natural. But I think the the discussion about his demise was a little overdone. And remember, he was banged up earlier in the season, too. So it when guys get banged up like that and he came back earlier than normal, I don't necessarily believe he's been 100%. And I don't think it's a coincidence that when he finally showed out against Buffalo, A, he's a superstar. That's what superstars generally do. But also, he had extra time to get ready and heal. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see another really good game from him just because I think he's closer to 100% than he's been for most of the season. It should be noted, though, that Buffalo was a team that kind of struggled to defend tight ends because the game Mm -hmm. before that, it was Pat Fryermuth that went off for a bunch of yards in the Steelers' offense and also a Bills team that was down several linebackers. So maybe that went into it as well because he was wide open in some of these passes. But again, it feels like the circle of trust is very small. For Patrick Mahomes, it is uh, Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, maybe even Isaiah Pacheco. Let me say this to you. You're chiming in all the way from Nashville. You've got a new home you want to continue decorating. You've talked about a six-point teaser. Niners minus one. You play the total down to 45 and bet the over. You like to gamble. You're four and one this week. Deal or no deal? If it's a free bet, yes, deal. If it's my own money... I will make a small wager on it. It will not be a million-dollar bet because same-game teasers, like, they're very tempting, but you really have Mm -hmm. to thread the needle because think about Mm -hmm. all outcomes of this game. Okay, if the Niners dominate, great. There's one of your sides. They win by at least one point. But then Mm -hmm. the total comes into play because if it's a blowout, this is usually a recipe for unders. And and 51-and-a-half is a pretty high total. That means it can land 51, and I know we're talking about the teaser, so now it's 45 and a half. It's over that hump of 45. So it definitely has a sabotage factor to it. So I like it, but again, I don't love it. Mm, Well, hold on. Hold on one second here. What's that? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Mm. All right. Well... The banker says that you could also put down a seven-point teaser if that makes you feel more comfortable since the line is moving up. Deal or no deal? No deal. Seven-point teaser? What is that, minus 145? No, thank you. But listening to this Ravens locker room, it... I know teams always like to say, oh, we're the underdogs. You play with a chip on their shoulder. But it really feels like when you listen to these guys, like to a man, they have all bought into this idea that no one is giving us enough credit, and they kind of play pissed off. Is is that accurate? Do you you get that sense? Uh, It's 100% accurate. And just being in the locker room, you know, the past couple years compared to this year, it, it is a different vibe. It's a different focus. And... I was uh, at the facility during the 49ers week where Kyle Hamilton, he was at the podium and he was saying, you know, oh, the number one seeds aren't made equal. You know, 11 win teams aren't made equal talking about the 49ers and how much pub that they get. And they did feel disrespected going into that football game. And they, you know, their talking was with the pads, was with their play. And it was similar when they played the Lions. I remember when the Lions came into Baltimore and they were really rolling. 
Ravens kind of had that same underdog mentality, and they went out and won that game 38-6. to They've absolutely embraced that type of role, and it's been a different type of focus in particular for a Lamar Jackson. You know, we've seen and heard from Marlon Humphrey. Uh, we had Kevin Zeitler on the Ravens starting guard, and different players say it's a different guy this year. The contract's beyond him, uh, behind him, and he's taken on more of a leadership role. First guy in, last guy out at the facility. He's calling out players. I mean, we, we heard about that halftime speech um, in this past game against Texans. Uh, so if they could bottle that up, you know, you would take that because they outscored <laughs> them 24 to nothing in the second half. But it, it, the laser focus for this team, and in particular Lamar Jackson, is extremely noticeable. Instead of looking at a spread or a total, and even a money line bet, because we had this conversation about the Ravens. The Ravens are plus 180 this week to win the Super Bowl. Of course, they're minus 200, something like that on the money line. So I was saying, okay, maybe you play the Ravens to win the Super Bowl instead of playing them on the money line. You can kind of use that same mentality with Super Bowl MVP because taking this a step further, if you like the Ravens to win this week, if you like the Ravens to win the Super Bowl, do you just take Lamar Jackson to win Super Bowl MVP? Now, granted, there's not a huge discrepancy there. Lamar Jackson plus 220 to win Super Bowl MVP. What did I say the Ravens were to win the Super Bowl? Like plus 180? So clearly there's not that much of a difference there. Mm -hmm. But Jenks, if you think the Ravens win the Super Bowl, doesn't it feel like Lamar Jackson is going to be the MVP? He has to. Like who else is going to win it for the Ravens? Do you know what I mean? It's... It's got to be Lamar. So I feel like if it's the Chiefs, obviously it's Mahomes, but especially if it's the if it's the Ravens. I mean, they they really live and die because by him, just because he has to use his arm, he has to use his legs, and I guess you can make the argument that the Chiefs are the same way. Mahomes just does it in a different manner. But I feel like no team has taken on the persona of its quarterback more so than the Ravens, right? So, yeah, I'd be on Lamar. Now, normally that's the case, is if a team wins the Super Bowl, their quarterback's probably going to have a good shot to win the Super Bowl MVP. But I think the mm -hmm. Niners are the one team where maybe this is not the case. Because I know during the regular season, the regular season MVP is most certainly an award that is given to quarterbacks mo uh, more often than not. But in the Super Bowl, can't you see Christian McCaffrey winning it? Winning Super Bowl MVP, because this award, you know, goes to usually the person with the best outputs. And for me, I feel like it's super tied to Christian McCaffrey. Oh, and you're getting the best value. Six to one value mm -hmm. right now is that's an amazing price. So if you're a believer in the Niners, then grab that up.